Hey gang, today we are taking a look at Toy World TWH01 Hardbone. It It's G1 Hardhead. What can I say? It is definitely a remake of G1 Hardhead. Now in the box we get the figure, his cannon, some directions, and Toy World's very nice little figure cards. I'm not going to show you the figure card because it's just the picture of the figure or the art on the front and then the picture of the figure on the back. But... That's all you get in the box, so let's take a closer look. Here we have the figure in vehicle mode. It is actually packaged in robot mode, but I wanted to start it off in vehicle mode. I like the vehicle mode. It's nice, it's good looking, and it's just really, really accurate to the original G1 figure. However, there are a few issues. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the guns. The guns can be stored easily on the side of the vehicle mode. The guns actually are really nice. I like the detailing. They're high-quality plastic, and the paint is just perfect on these things. Nothing moves on them, but, uh, oh well. Very, very nice guns. Very nice weapons. All right, so the tank mode itself, as I said, I do like it, but there are some minor issues. First off is the cannon. The hinge, the pin here on the cannon, is way too loose for my taste. And trying to get the cannon pegged in to the back here, getting it in and out is actually quite difficult. And that's because there's not a lot of clearance between the hole and the actual peg. So getting it in, getting it pegged in, is actually really tough because you'll push down and just a little bit of force will send it flying either way. And this very loose hinge is not helpful in the least bit. The cannon itself is really well done. I'm very impressed with the look of the cannon. It's just a nice looking gun. I wish that uh, there was more movement in the cannon than just the stock sliding up and down, but hey, it moves. The overall look of the gun, very nice. I really do dig the act. I actually like the tip of the cannon. The This clear yellow plastic works really well, and just the red highlights, very nice. The tank itself, as you can see, is very G1-esque. However, as I said, a few minor issues. One, the rear treads won't go straight. As you can see, they're angled off a little bit. That's because the way they peg in to place is via, via these clear translucent or translucent pegs that do fold up, but you can't slide the pegs all the way into the treads. It just won't let you. It just, at one point, just stops moving, and that's as far as it'll go. The other issue is the torso articulation is evident, and it does wiggle a little bit. And then the back here is just on this pivot and hinge, so when you try to push the cannon in, it slides, and that, that's just an annoyance. Overall, even though there are these minor little issues, I do find the tank mode quite nice. The little headmaster unit is actually pretty cool. He's very well uh, ball-jointed and poseable, but there's one little problem with him. He's top-heavy, and you can't hide the robot face at all unlike the original Headmasters. His arms are on like a swivel ball joint, which gives him some posability, and his legs are double hinged for the transformation. Overall, he is very well detailed and very cool looking, but the little bugger can't stand up at all. So if you want him to stand, you kind of have to break his knees and lean him forward, and that just doesn't look good. Transformation for him is just turning the legs around like this and folding them up, and they don't really peg into place anywhere. They just kind of lay there. And that's it. That's his transformation. Transformation into robot mode is actually pretty darn complex. To start with, we'll begin... Eh, we'll start with the legs. So to start with the legs, what we need to do is first lift up this front flap and pull out this gray piece from underneath the vehicle mode. Then come up to the front of the treads and un and unpeg the front of the treads. Now this is actually a little bit tricky considering that the treads easily get pushed up into the body. So what you can do is 
get something to pop this part open. Now over here, I didn't make that mistake. So all you need to do is get your nail in and open up the tread like that. When you open up the tread, then you can push the leg out from inside the tread. And this is actually kind of hard to do. So you just kind of got to get a handle on the figure and kind of wiggle the tread out from, or wiggle the leg out from the rest of the bot, from the rest of the tread, sorry. Ratcheting joints. Now once we've got the leg extended, fold the front of the tread up and then collapse the, fold the front of the tread up, not all the way, and then collapse it into the back of the leg. And these leg pits are held into place by this front piece here. So I was able to get this tread piece up. What I had to do is take a little screwdriver to it. And yes, I did damage the figure a little bit. There was really no way around that. All right, so folding the leg out and then fold the tread up again and push it in. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is come up to the front here and the side bits, fold them out, open the canopy up and pull the headmaster out and push this bit up, the whole front of the tank part up, close these bits and then just fold the tank bit down like that. All right, so now we'll take the hips and bring them together like that. Push them up, and then this peg that is formed will actually peg into this gray piece, which will hold it all into place. There we go. Now for the feet. We'll actually just take the these big orange treads and fold them back, and then these sections will pull out and fold up. And there we have the legs. For the upper torso, the way we're going to get his transformation done is first close the canopy, and that will pull this section up. And all we'll do is just swing that around, and that'll be his backpack. And then for his arms, or for the rear treads, push them in, and that will unpeg them. Then fold the pegs down, like that. And then what we're going to do is pretty much the same thing that we did with the legs. We're going to take the tread, Open the rear tread, or open the tread open. Open the tread open, yes. Open the tread up, and then fold out this section here to expose the fist. Now the fists don't really come out all that easily, but once you get them out, they're good to go. And then you turn the figure around, and you pull the arm down. And then you just kind of leave the tread hanging. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Open the tread. Open the holder for the arm, or for the hand. Kind of wiggle the hand out. Pull the arm all the way out. Turn it around. Just drape the tread down. And now for the head. And the head is this nice wide section that the headmaster just pegs into. And that's it. That's the transformation. Before we add all the accessories onto Hardbone, I did want to show you the posability of the figure. The head swivels but it more ratchets than swivels. But when you do that, be really careful because you're going to start moving the legs around and things get all wonky and just be careful. Arms are on ratchets for the shoulders and then swivels for forward and back movement. Then there are swivels just underneath the shoulder and ratchets in the elbows. Torso articulation is a ratchet. Then we have ratcheting hips for forward and back and in and out movements. Bends at the knee, not 90 degrees, and a little bit of foot articulation for posability. Overall, a pretty darn posable figure. There are two hidden compartments, one on each leg. In the first compartment, open it up and you have a grenade or a grenader. And then in the second compartment, you've got a giant robot Bowie knife, which I greatly appreciate. Now both of these can be attached to the guns. So the grenade can be plugged into the gun or held in robot mode or actually put into the cannon. Though it doesn't really want to stay when you put it in the cannon. So we'll put that into the gun like that. And the Bowie knife can be attached as a bayonet on the bottom of the guns or held in robot mode. I prefer the bayonet option. 
I just think that looks awesome. So here we have Hardbone with all of his accessories. And I gotta say, he looks really good. I like the look of this guy. There's a little bit of junk in the trunk back here, but that's actually completely forgivable. There are a few minor little issues with the figure, though, and I'll cover those in a minute. But I just want you guys to look at this figure, and Toy World has done a really good job capturing the original G1 look and feel of this guy. I really like this figure. I really like the look of it. I love the little yellow, clear yellow accents he's got all over him. It's a really nice looking figure. Those minor issues that I was talking about chiefly stem from the arms. And the arms, well, the swivels are just way too loose. For example, say you're holding the figure and you turn him this way. Yep. I mean, the weight of the gun just causes his arm to just flop. And that's my chief issue with the figure. Some of the bits don't feel all that tight. I mean, there's a lot of wiggle in the legs and the hips from the ratchets. There's not so much any issue with the, with the knees. The feet are a little too loose, but thankfully they're wide enough that they hold together. But this wiggle in the legs really worries me. And the looseness in the swivel up here at the arms is a major issue for me. Plus the little nagging issue of every time I push down on the cannon to push it into the holes, the thing just slides around. But that's more of just me being nitpicky. But the wiggle in the legs and the swivel is, is an actual issue. And especially for a hundred and twenty-some dollar figure, that should not be there. Transformation back into tank mode is just a reversal of everything we've done, but it is a little bit tricky because things have a tendency of getting in the way. The arms, however, or I should say thankfully, are pretty easy. So we just collapse the arms, fold the fist up, and plug the tread in, and that's that. Do that for the other side, retract the arm, fold the fist up, and plug the tread in. And then I'm not going to put the tread back down, I'm not going to plug the treads in yet. And then fold this back piece in like that. Now, for the legs, fold this up and out of the way. Fold these open. Unpeg the, the gray piece. Pull the legs down and separate them. And then here, I like to fold this green piece down and peg it in first. And then kind of just fold it up. It's not pegged in all the way, is it? One thing that is cool is this green piece, this gray piece flips down and around and just pegs in nicely. Uh, that's about it. So then we will slide the feet in, fold the heel up, do that on both sides, open the tread. And one other thing that happened to me when I first transformed this, I opened the tread up and the wheel fell out. The little plastic yellow piece does connect in there, but it just popped out. That's annoying, but easily fixable. And let me fold the tread up and snap that into place. And do the same thing on the other side. And this is the side that had issues. So we will just do this as carefully as possible. Fold that, pick that in, and just lightly snap that into place. There we go. And then just lift the front up and peg the front pieces in. And then fold out these pegs. And bring these guys down like that. Last but not least, open the canopy and put the headmaster in. Now, I have found the best way to put the headmaster in, even though it looks like there's leg clearance in there. There really isn't. Just fold his legs up and drop him in. That's pretty much the best way to do it. So peg that in. And then we will attach the guns to the side. Like that. 
And last but not least, put the cannon on. And I prefer to put it on the right side. Oh, there we go. And there we have tank mode. So overall, Hardbone is a pretty cool figure. At $125, $120, $125, it, I don't think this figure should have some of the issues that it has, but still, I really like this figure, and I'm really interested to see what Toy World comes up with next. I hope it's, oh, I don't know, maybe another Headmaster. It's just a little weird that all these third parties are doing Headmasters all at the same time. Oh, and one thing I forgot to, I did forget to show you is you could take the grenade and actually peg it in or slide it in up here as a scope. And that's where this thing lifts up to. So that can be a scope. So yeah, as I said, it's a good figure, has a few minor issues, but overall I do like this guy.